Hi, this is Trey Pastor, and welcome to the 50th and final part of my Blu-ray slash DVD collection of 2014. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in for the first 14 parts. And I thought when I got to this show that it would be, you know, that uh, there would be more parts, but I managed to get through uh, uh, a show in one video, so that's, that's good. Anyway, so let me get right into it so this doesn't drag out, hopefully, and let me tell us cut down on my smart ass commentary so this can go um, pretty fast because I have a lot of films from the final to bottom cabinet so let's go to it. Okay, uh, Cloud Atlas, a very surreal movie by the uh, Wachowski brother and sister now. Really good. I like that. Tom uh, Hanks and uh, Halle Berry and various other actors play multiple characters in that. Then we have Percy Jackson and the Lightning uh, Jackson and the Olympians and the Lightning Thief which is the first movie, which was better than the second movie, which I got later. And then we have Olympus Has Fallen, a really good movie, Gerard Butler, Aaron Eckhart, and Morgan Freeman, uh, about the taking over of the White House. This is uh, the more serious version of the other one with Jamie Foxx and Channing Tatum, but this was a good movie. I like that Gerard Butler was really good in that. Then we have the Naked Gun, <laughs> uh, the makers of Police Squad, Leslie Nielsen, a comedy class, as far as I'm concerned, that Leslie Nielsen was born to play those parts. Then we have uh, Once. This is season two, I believe. Yeah, second season. I love this show. It's one of my favorite shows. It's supposed to come back, I think, this weekend, tomorrow. Because uh, it was off. I hate it, I think, for like a month. I think the last new episode was in, back in December. So I think now it's supposed to stay on, I think, from, Fe from February all the way through, I think, March, April, February, March, April, to, I think, to April, I think. Okay, I was on a hiatus for a long time. I think now it's supposed to be straight episodes, which is good. And I think I have part. Uh, one over here, hold on, so I can just show you, uh, if I have it, I can get to it. Uh, uh, I'll get to it when I get to it, but I have uh, part one of that. <laughs> oh, season one, excuse me, this is season two. Here, Jack Reacher, uh, Tom Cruise based on the novels. This is actually a pretty decent movie. Yeah, I know Tom, uh, the character of Jack Reacher is supposed to be six foot four, I think, but Tom Cruise was good in that. <laughs> uh, mama, mama. I like this one. This is a nice horror story, but uh, she's too, uh, produced by Germel Ger de Toro about these uh, two young girls that, you know, their father, I think, he has a like a, a breakdown. He kills his wife, kidnaps his kids and stuff, and takes them out to the wood with the plans of killing them, of course, but then something interrupts him from doing that, <laughs> and the kids are sub subsequently uh, lost for a period of a couple of years, and then they get found, and they're taken, taken in by their uncle, okay, the father's brother, and but of course, they bring something back with them. That's Mama, and it's really good. Jessica Chastain's in that, and the guy who's from um, uh, Game of Thrones who plays uh, a Lannister, uh, Jamie Lannister. He's okay. And then we have Friends, the fifth and final season. Okay, in Blu-ray. I gotta watch this again because this season, you know, it was only I think 13 episodes or so, and but I want to watch the special features and stuff. And this show should still be on. Friends was a really good show, but like I said, it has the misfortune of being done on Fox. Who cancels things way too much, too fast. Star Trek The Undiscovered Country, Star Trek 6, I think this is the one William Shatner directed, I believe, which is not as good as the other ones. Uh, hold on, let me make sure. Hey, no, 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 not this. No, not this one. He didn't direct this one. I think he directed five. Yeah, Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country. No, Shatner directed five. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one's the one that Shatner directed. With Spock's brother, uh, this is less than be desirable. Okay, then Star Trek: The Motion Picture, the original, Leisure. <laughs> okay, and then we have Sapphire. Sapphire is uh, based on a true story about these uh, Aborigine sisters that entertained during Vietnam. And this is a really good movie. And Brian O'Dowd, who there plays uh, Chris O'Dowd. So why say Brian O'Dowd? Chris O'Dowd plays the manager, and the actresses that play the Sapphire things are really good too. They're really really talented man. It's a real good story. Definitely highly recommend the Sapphires. Then we have Epic. This is a uh, animated movie. Uh, this one's okay. About this good little girl, her father discovers this world and he's a scientist and his daughter who's kind of estranged from she comes to live with him and through some wacky circumstances she gets uh, taken into that world and stuff and her father has to find her. And it's, it's, really, it's okay. Then we have Wayne's World. Party time. Excellent. I love Wayne's World. That's good. Uh, 
geez, Michael Myers and uh, Dana Carvey. Good, and Tina Carrera looks so hot in that movie. Okay, then the day the earth stood still. Ugh, this is the original. Yeah, this is the original. Okay, the original classic, uh, Michael Rennie and Patricia O'Neill, right? I think that's her name. Yeah, Patricia O'Neill about this when these this visitor comes to, to you know to Earth to warn them about their about changing their ways, you know, warring ways. It's a really good, really intense. The remake with um, Ken Reeves is kind of horrible. <laughs> okay, and then we have Jubal. This is a Criterion. Uh, this is a great cast in this. You have uh, Glenn Ford, uh, Rod Steiger, Ernest Borgnine, and it's a really good story about it's kind of a Shakespearean thing where Ernest Borgnine is married to this uh, really hot young uh, wife and she's having an affair with Rod Steiger. Then uh, Glenn Ford who plays the title character, Jubal, comes to the, comes and gets hired by uh, Ernest Borgnine. And then, of course, she kind of falls for um, Glenn Ford's character, and of course, and he doesn't. You know, he just you know, he doesn't want nothing to do with her because, you know, he's friends with her and Spurman that character, but some wacky things happen and it's a really intense western and I remember seeing that on uh, cable and that's why I bought this when it came on Criterion. It came out at the same time that this one came out, Three Ten to Yuma. This is the original one with Glenn Ford and uh, what's that guy's name? Uh Van Helfman, uh, who plays uh there's people my people probably remember the Christian Bale one and uh and uh Russell Crowe. But this is the original Glenn Ford and Van Helfman, who plays Van Helfman, who plays the guy, I guess the Christian Bale role, and Glenn Ford plays the Russell Crowe role, you know, the guy that has to be uh, on that train, 310 to Yuma. And the original is really good, too. Okay, and then we have Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> Saves the World, these superhero ones. I like these. Uh, Scott Pilgrim, superhero one, game changer. But the guy who falls in love with this girl who has her evil exes, <laughs> really good. I love that. The cast in that movie is great. I love uh, Chris Evans and uh, the guy who plays Superman in Superman Returns. I can't remember his name now. Let me see. He was really good in this. I can't remember his name. Brandon Roth. He, yeah, he was good too. Then The Big Lebowski. I love this movie. Uh, uh, Jeff Bridges, uh, John Goodman. This is really good. Okay, then we have Pitch Black, the original, which is really, out of all the three Riddick movies, this one was. was which Riddick was more of a supporting character in this, but this is a really good sci-fi horror movie. And then we have uh, The Watchmen. I have so many different versions of The Watchmen. My favorite movie is Zack Snyder, based on a graphic novel. This great, intense. That's why I hope they get the Batman vs. Superman right, because uh, I love The Watchmen, and, and that shows you can't, you can't do, a, I think, a superhero movie they do it right. Uh, true Grit. Uh, John Wayne, the original, which is a classic. Uh, Glenn, Glenn Campbell and Kim Darby. About, you know, Kim Darby hires him, John Wayne, to uh, find the man who killed her father. Then we have the Vampire Lovers. This is the uh, Hammer Horror movie. The Female Vampires. I absolutely love these Hammer Horror movies. Okay, and then we have uh, James Wan, The Conjuring. I love this movie. Patrick Wilson, uh, Vera Flaminga, uh, Ron Livingston, and uh, what's her name? Uh... I can't remember her name. Uh, they cut basically the couple Patrick Wilson and Rafa Manning come help this couple that being haunted. There you got a little graph. Love that. See the hands clapping. I help this couple that you know, these daughters that are getting haunted basically by in this haunted farmhouse. Then we have Hobbit: The Unexpected Journey. It's just an extending edition. I like the cover of this one. Got that from Best Buy. Love the cover of that for that. Love the Hobbit movies. Love anything Lord of the Rings. And I have the uh, the Boondocks. Uh, these are on sale for nine ninety nine. I had to get. It. I love the Boondocks. I believe season four is gonna start this year. I don't think it started yet, but it's supposed to start. Okay, the first season Boondocks. Then we have the complete second season. Okay, and then we have the third season. Okay, which I haven't. I don't think I've watched as much. Okay, which I gotta watch. Okay. There we go. I love the Boondocks. Love the, I always love the comic book, not comic strip, excuse me. Then now the uh, the movie. Let's take this down. Okay. Okay. There we go. And then we have Steve McQueen, James Garner, Richard Anbury, The Great Escape. I know this is a classic, but I think I've only seen clips of this, so I have to watch this from beginning to end. Then they have the Count of Monte Cristo about a guy who basically gets framed by his friend and sent to prison. 
Okay, and he has to, he plots revenge. He comes back with the Count of Monte Cristo. He's a totally different character to get his revenge. Then we have Clint Eastwood in a classic Western, the 40th anniversary edition. And he's a nice, fancy, universal cover. High Plains Drifter, basically a story about this drifter that comes to town. This town that's getting ready to get terrorized by these uh, three outlaws. And they hire this drifter to, to settle the score, but there's more to this drifter than meets the eye. Okay, it really Clint Eastwood sets us quite a mood with this movie. Okay, then we have uh, Will, F Will Farrell, Anchorman. I bought this because, uh, uh, but I, you know, I bought this, but I should, I should have bought it before Anchorman 2. I saw Anchorman 2 because you get the 750 off if you saw Anchorman 2, which I already saw beforehand. But this is the, uh, the mahogany edition, which has a ton of special features in this thing. A ton of special features. Look at that list of special features. And then you can see that there's a ton of them there. Then we have, of course, another one the Universal Cup. A, movie, a classic movie, uh, Weird Science. I love uh, these 80s movies. And uh, Anthony Michael Hall and Kelly LeBrock and Ian Mitchell Smith. Just a great, great comedy. A young Robert Downey Jr. is in that. Okay, then we have, of course, the classic Remember the Titans. Uh, Denzel Washington is the coach that you know comes to take, basically takes over this football program. And they have to overcome their differences. Really good, great performance by Denzel in that. Then we have Halloween 2, the uh, 30th anniversary edition. And I know there's a diff another different edition for Halloween 2 that I want to get. Then we have The Rock, of course. This is a great classic movie. Michael Bay, uh, uh, Sarah Carney, Nicolas Cage, and Ed Harris. All right. Yeah, Michael Bay, yeah. And they, uh, these military officers try to take over this, right? I think Ed Harris plays the disgruntled, and they have to send in, then they send in uh, Nicolas Cage and uh, Sean Carney. But Sean Carney's been on the rock, so he knows it. Then we have... Enchanted, Disney Enchanted. I love, like this movie up until the end part. I didn't like the ending of this. Okay, basically about this uh, fairy tale princess who gets taken, played by Amy Adams, and she gets brought to the modern world and her adjustment to that. And then of course, uh, great performance by uh, Cyclops there. What's his name? I remember his name. James Marsden, who's it's the prince, her prince, who comes to the world looking for her. Okay. And then we have American History X, a great intense movie. Uh, Edward Norton, and Edward Furlong. About a white supremacist who gets sent to prison, and then he kind of changes his way. Then he's trying to stop his younger brother from following his footpath. His footpath, footprints. Excuse me. Then we have Thief, Criterion, Michael Mann film. I gotta watch this again. Uh, James Conn is a thief. Uh, James Belushi, I believe, is in this. And, and Tuesday Well, really good. I like Michael Mann's films. It's, you know, the intensity level in films are great. And this is Star Trek uh, Unification. This is, uh, I believe, the one season. Epic two-parter, you know, when they're releasing, they're releasing the Blu-rays of Star Trek The Next Generation, and they give you, like, the, um, like, the, the, um, the end season finale of one season and the beginning of the next season, so they build them into all into one thing, and this is the one where Spock was the guest star when they were trying to reunite the, the Vulcans with the, um, the Vulcans with the Cleons, so, no, not the Vulcans, the Cleons, Vulcans with this, uh, Romulans, excuse me, but they're kind of related. Vulcans and Romulans, not Cleons. And then the best years of my life, my best movie of the year, uh, favorite movie of all time. I love about the three veterans that come home from the war and their lives and their families and stuff. And I really, the best movie I've ever seen. Okay, that's my all time favorite movie. Okay, so when it had to come on Blu rays, I had to get that. Then we have The Uninvited, a nice uh, 1944 horror movie about this haunted house and his brother and sister that move into it. And the story that goes with it, really good. Ray Milan is in that. Then we have I Dream of Jamie, the complete collection. I love Barbara Eden, so I had to get this about, you know, Major Anthony Elson and finds, you know, Jamie. And, of course, <coughs> excuse me, um, she, uh, you know, she's gorgeous and she wants, to, you know, and she's a master, of, you know. But, you know, this movie was, you know, it wasn't the right way. Because if anybody had a Jamie who looked as gorgeous as she did and gave me every wish, there's no way in the world you'd be, you'd be trying to stop her from making wishes and stuff. Okay, uh, Lost Season 4. I got that in a um, uh, pawn shop, okay, for a decent price. And then Season 3, okay, right there. I got to get the other seasons on Blu-ray. There we go. I'll get those eventually. Okay. And then we have Kentucky Fried Movie. One of the <laughs> favorite by Young, by the Zucker Brothers, I think. Yeah, yeah Jerry Zucker, Abe James Avery, and David Zucker. Early. It's just like a collection of... Uh, Different skits and stuff. Really funny. I remember seeing that. Okay, and then we got the all-time 
favorite like, team coming of age was The Last American Virgin. This is the Arrow release, okay? And the soundtrack is killer. There's basically about this, these three friends, and this guy right here is the main character, and he, of course, has the most crush on this character right there, her, who only has eyes for his friend. And it's a really intense coming of age movie. And this is a remake of a Israeli film, and this movie is, ooh, and especially the ending, ooh, that ending is unforgettable. And then we have Don John, uh, Don, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, his uh, writing and directing debut. Really good about this guy who loves his car, his house, his girls, and his porn. Okay, <laughs> really good. And then we have The Crazies. This is a horror movie. It's supposed to be a remake, actually. Timothy Oliphant. I want to watch this. I haven't watched that yet, but I heard good things about it. Then we have Sinister, a nice another uh, horror movie by uh, starring Ethan Hawke. Really, really good. And the less said, the better about it. But it's you have to see this movie to believe it. I thought it was legitimately scary and creepy. Then we have a Clockwork Orange, Stanley, uh, Stanley Kubrick film, uh, Malcolm McDowell. Uh, it's really good about these criminals and basically the one particular criminal that gets reprogrammed, okay? And, and really good performance by Malcolm McDowell. Then we have Donnie Darko, a really intense independent film. Uh, about this boy who talks to this six-foot bunny. <laughs> and it's, it's a real movie. You gotta watch this. A movie like this gotta be watched like a couple of times to get all the hidden meanings in it. Okay, and then we have uh, District 9, okay, which I heard a lot of great things about, and I finally got it, about this alien culture that crashes on the earth, and they subsequently put them in like a ghetto and stuff, and then basically about their prejudice against them, and really, really good performance, and Sherrod Copley is the guy in that movie, okay, and then we have Monsters University, which I thought was a slight step below Monsters, Inc., okay, and basically this is the story about how they met in college. Frank and Sully, and then we have R.I.P.D. 3D, Jeff uh, Bridges and Ryan Reynolds. This 3D version with a lenticular cover. Uh, uh, to me, this was, I know a lot of people said, uh, I disagree, this movie wasn't that good, okay? Uh, I mean, it had potential, but it didn't live up to this potential, to me, okay? So, uh, put that back, and put that down. Okay, so now let's move on. Then we have uh, Elvis, uh, Viva Las Vegas, Elvis and Anne Margaret. <laughs> what more can you say? Great performances, great performances by the great, by two great stars in this. Okay, then we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the three movies, a three pack. Okay, okay. Then we got uh, Cinderella. This is the uh, diamond. This is the uh, metal pack. Okay, that that's that the best buy. Then we have the movie itself, Cinderella, three disc diamond edition. Okay, you know the story. And, and then we have Titanic, of course, the classic on Blu-ray. I think I have this. I have this on DVD, Blu-ray, and VHS. I think Titanic. Okay, and then we have the Avengers. This is the uh, again the metal pack. <laughs> okay. And I think it comes with the ten dollars. Uh, Gift card from uh, Science So Collectibles, which I still haven't used. Then we have Seven Samurai, a Kira Kurosawa film, a great movie, with inspiration for the Magnificent Seven about these seven warriors who get hired to protect this town. A really good, really intense film. Then we have Hotel Transylvania, a nice animated movie, uh, great voice talent in this. Adam Sandler and Andy Sandberg, Selena Gomez, Kevin James, Steve Buscemi, and CeeLo Green. It's a really good movie. But a, a about these monsters and and particularly the Adam, um, Adam Sandler's character is the vampire in this, and he tries to protect his young daughter, played by Selena Gomez in there. And then he, you know, they meet a human, accidentally discovers where these monsters live. Then we have Frank and Rini, uh, a really good movie, and they also have a nice uh, <coughs> a live version, short of this movie, and this is like a tribute to the old Universal horror movies. Okay, and really, really good. I like that. Then we have another remake, Total Recall. This is the extended director's cut. Colin Farrell, Kate Beckinsale, Jessica Biel. They changed this around from the auto. It's enough change where it's not, <coughs> excuse me, where it's <coughs> not the same as the auto version, okay, which I think is a better movie. But this movie had its moments. Uh, and then we have The Awakening, Jessica, uh, Rebecca Hall, because they Jessica Hall. Uh, Rebecca Hall, Dominic West, and M Elma the Staten. Okay, really about this. Uh, female, like the, uh, what's the, uh, the lady's character, 
but she uh, investigates uh, basically um, supposedly haunted places. Okay, and it, and it has a twist to it. Okay, and then we have Star Trek Insurrection. These are the ones with the new generation. Star Trek Insurrection. There we go. And again, uh, Star Trek Generations. This is the one with uh, the new cast and the old cast, and Captain Kirk is in this. And then we have Gangster Squad, uh, Josh Brolin, Ryan Gosling, Nick Nolte, Emma Stone, and Sean Penn. And this movie didn't live up to its uh, potential in me. This movie was a, a disappointment. Uh, could have been a lot better than it was. Okay, uh, The Impossible, which is really good about this one family story, doing a tsunami, and really, really good. I love this movie. love the performance by uh, uh, Naomi Watson, Ian McGregor. When he makes that phone call, oh, that just... You know, really got to me. Can we have a few good men? You can't handle the truth. Then Shutter Island, Leonardo DiCaprio, a really good story about a detective that's sent to this island to investigate the disappearance of a patient. A really, really intense and has a nice twist to it. Okay, and then we have The Unborn, another horror movie. This is two versions of The Unrated, and the theatrical and the unrated, about this girl that she gets haunted, and basically she tries to. She, you know, to find out why she's being haunted, and it's, it's a decent movie. I know a lot of people give it crap, but I liked it. And then we have Invergis, okay, another good movie by Neil McDonough. Right? No, no, not Neil McDonough, by Martin McDonough, starring uh, Colin Farrell, <coughs> excuse me, you know, Brendan Gleeson, and Ralph Fiennes, about these two hitmen. They have a last job to do, and they have to hide out in Burgess. That's the title, in Burgess. And, of course, Colin Farrell is like a restless hitman who hates being where he is, and Brendan Gleeson is like the older veteran one. It's a really good, fun movie and intense as well. And we have Great Expectations, John Mills, Valley Hobson, David Lean's Great Expectations. I saw several different versions of this story. I like the story about a guy that, that he gets a poor man that gets, I think, gets apprenticed by this uh, this couple, and then he, uh, hold on, and then he falls, of course, for this, uh, but for the daughter of this of the girl that he's apprenticing for, and and of course she's for some reason she I think she gets trained not to not to fall in love even though he falls in love with her, and it's a really good movie. I remember there's several different versions of that. Uh, the Great Expectations. And then we have Star Trek: uh, Next Generation on Blu-ray. This is season one, and this is uh, season two, and then this is season three. Now I gotta get four and five, I think, are out already. I gotta get those seasons. I'll probably have to get them on eBay because they got them in the Best Buy, but they sell them way too much. And then we have Star Trek, uh, The Next Generation, The Best of Both Worlds. This is the one where the, the Borg comes and they kidnap Captain Picard and assimilate him. <laughs> okay. He's, uh, I forgot the, the Q name they gave him. Bruce's Q, or whatever his name is. Anyway, this is a uh, Silver Lines playbook. Now, when it came out at the time, this is a good movie, Bradley Cooper. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and she won the Academy Award, of course. And uh, but when it came out in the states, it didn't have a slipcover. But now that it's out again, I think they released it again. It has a slipcover. So now I gotta try to order the slipcover from uh, eBay. Okay, for that. And then we have Sandlot. Next, I love this comedy about these kids that play baseball in a sandlot, literally. And it's a really good coming of age story. And then we have, of course Star Trek Nemesis. Okay, more of the start of the. Uh, Next Generation Star Trek movies, Star Trek Nemesis, there we go. And I think, what's what's in this, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh what's, his, what's his name? With, with his clone. Has, uh, Picard's clone played by, uh, Bane over there. I just can't remember his real name now, the actor. <laughs> Star Trek First Contact, okay. Okay, let me put this down. Okay. Okay, there we go. So now over here, this is should be the last of it here. Okay. The possession. A uh, nice movie about these uh about the divorce couple and the two daughters uh are visiting with the father and the father takes them to like a like a yard sale and the youngest daughter finds uh, like a, a box and a ring and he buys it for her and then she starts to get possessed by the spirit. And it's actually really intense and Jeffrey, uh, what's his name? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. That's right. He was a really good actor. 
Magic City, it was a show that got canceled way before his time. He's good in that. He plays a concerned father, of course. And then we have Grindhouse. This is Robert Rodriguez, called Quentin Tarantino, about the two stories. You know, uh, it has this nice slip cover. And of course, you have the two stories in there. You have uh, Planet Terror and Death Group. Okay. And then we have Tom Cruise and The Firm. Okay, a really good movie. Uh, John Grissom, uh, like that. And then we have uh, Jennifer Lawrence in a movie that, to me, is a disappointment. Uh, the House at the End of the Street, this is the unrated version. Okay, it didn't live up to the hype. Okay. Excuse me. And then we have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Insidious, uh, James Wan. This is the first one. A really good movie. I like that. Horror movie about this uh, son who gets, basically he gets, he gets possessed, I think. By the spirit, and his father has to go to the spirit world to try to get him, get his soul back. Then we have the Boondock Saints. Okay, uh, what's my man from uh, from The Walking Dead? Is in this? He plays one of the brothers. Him and uh, Norman Reedus. I'm sorry, Saint Patrick, the two Irish brother who become vigilantes and stuff. And William Defoe is is really an intense FBI agent who's after them. Really weird performance by William Defoe in that. Then we have Coraline, an animated movie I thought was really good. It has some really freaky good atmosphere with this young girl called Coraline. Okay, and then we have West Side Story. This is the 50th anniversary edition, okay, which I did an unboxing of on my channel. Okay, love this movie. Uh, you know, one was winner of 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Okay, and then we have Once. Here is the uh, season one, okay, of Once. That's actually one of my favorite shows that I'm watching right now. In the middle of season three right now, which I think starts again tomorrow, okay, the uh, third season, the second half of it. Then we have Grease, John Travolta, Olivia Newton John. I want to love Olivia Newton John at the end, very sexy. Then Fatal Tracks, the classic, uh, Michael Douglas, then Close. I will not be ignored. Then The Hunt for Red October, okay, there you go. The first Jack Ryan movie, okay, with um, Alec Baldwin as Jack Ryan. Then we have Star Trek. The Universe 3, The Search for Spock, a really good movie. Then we have American History X, okay. Why do I think I have two of these down? Okay, but anyway, American History X about this. I think I just, I, I, did, I, I remember just talking about it. So I do have two versions of this, which I get. <laughs> anyway, then we have uh, Sleeping with the Enemy, Jerry Roberts, and uh, she plays a wife who's you know, in a match with this real controlling guy. What's his name? Patrick. Uh, uh, Patrick. This is good. What's his name here? Patrick Bourbon. Yeah, he's a really controlling guy, and she fakes her death just to get away from him. And of course, he finds out that she's not really dead. <laughs> and then we have Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee. Uh, back when he was making good movies. <laughs> but then a really good movie about this about Brooklyn and, and this and basically race relations in Brooklyn during this intense summer. Really good. I think Martin Lawrence is in that too. Then she's out of my league about this nerdy guy, Jay Baruchel, who meets this really incredibly hot, hot uh, Alice Eve, okay, and they start to date, and it's really good, it's really good movie, a nice comedic touch. Then we have Road Chick, okay, uh, great movie, uh, uh, of course, because Tom Green is not the focus of the movie, he's just a character in it, and it's basically about this, this guy's at college, and one guy uh, basically has an affair with Amy Smart, and of course, then I think... What happens is somebody tapes him, and then they send it to his girlfriend, and he has to basically go on a road trip to try to get to t get to her before she gets the tape of him cheating on her, cheating on his girlfriend. And then we have Martyrs. I talked about this movie. This movie is so intense. I did a review on my channel. We read this in, the, I think, the Hotel Transylvania on my Trade Fair Society reviews. And this movie is so freaking intense. The last half hour of this movie made me physically squirm in my seat. That's how intense this movie is. Okay, and then we have one of my one of the best movies I've seen. Uh, I think I saw this last year, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Uh, basically about this young guy, uh, Logan Lerman, who's a kind of a loner, and he kind of falls in with Emma Watson and Ezra, Ezra Miller, who play uh, like I think step siblings. He kind of falls in with their crowd, and he kind of hang hangs out with him, but he also is like harboring a, a secret. And it's a really intense movie, and it's directed written and directed by the guy who wrote the book which is a very rare thing, but it's written really well done, okay? Then we have, uh, excuse me, we have Date Night, uh, 
uh, Stephen Corral and uh, Tina Fey, which I've yet to watch, basically about this couple that I think go, they go out on a date night and then wacky things happen to them. Okay, and then we have, of course, a really good, uh, intense uh, horror movie, uh, Cabin in the Woods. Uh, Josh Wheaton, this movie I think was on the shelf for a while, and then it got released, and really, really good. <laughs> okay, and kind of makes fun of all the horror, uh, I guess, horror cliches. And then we have Beautiful Girls. I love this movie. This, look at the cast of this movie. Matt Dillon, Lauren Harley, Timothy Hutton, Rosie O'Donnell, and young Natalie, young, young Natalie Portman and Michael Rappaport. And I love the relationship between uh, Nat Natalie Portman's character and Timothy Hutton. She's a, she's a young next-door neighbor that he meets when he comes back to town. And they have a kind of a quirky kind of relationship and really good. And probably the best relationship in this movie. <laughs> okay, and then we have uh, Skyfall. This is the steel book. I got this from the UK. Amazon that UK. I love this movie. One of the best Bond movies. Okay, and I got the steel book for that. And then we have uh, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. I got this from uh, the trade with uh, Rossi Boy 19. It's the sequel to I Know What You Did Last Summer, which is decent. And then we have the Steel Book of Resident Evil Retribution. Okay, I know these movies are not the best, but I you know, I get them anyway because I like, you know, they entertain me. So then we have Avengers. This is the 3D version. This is the uh, that's Blu-ray, 3D, Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, and music. Okay, you know more, more to be said about the Avengers. I'm looking forward to part two. Okay, and now that especially now that they say uh, <laughs> the Vision is going to be in this movie, it should be great. Even more Vision and plus Scarlet Witch and. Uh, Quick, and Quicksilver, and Ultron the villain, Tintin 3D, okay, then we have VHS, a movie that I watched, and it actually gave me motion sickness, I watched this movie, and no shit, no kidding me, and I, I actually got physically sick, <laughs> what, it gave me motion sickness, because of the shaky camera thing, I actually got physically, you know, and I, and I thought it was something that I ate, but I, then I realized, wait a minute, I was watching this movie at the time, and, I, and it gave me motion sickness, <laughs> believe it or not, now, The Beast of the Southern Wind, I got this movie. It's supposed to be really good. Now, I started to watch this, but then I just got, I don't know, maybe I was in the right mood for it, but I kind of got kind of bored, and I just stopped watching it. But I'm going to try to re-watch that again. And then we have for a good time call about these two friends who kind of uh, move in with each other, even though they can't stand each other. Because I guess the one girl needs a, a roommate, and the other one needs a place to live. Okay, it was okay. Not as good as it could have been. Okay, now let's see. Let me put this down. Get to the last pile. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Then we have another Cure Carousel film, Red. Okay, about this. I think this is the one about this is my father and his um, his world of sons, right? Betrayed him. And then we divide among his three children, yeah. And of course, it doesn't work out. You know, he wants his land to be divided among his children, but of course, his sons ain't agreeing to that. And it's a really intense, intense movie. Then we have uh, Yoyimbo. Okay, and this is the one about, uh, hold on. Oh, yeah, about this uh, warrior that uh, basically pits one clan against each, against another one. A really, really good movie. Okay, yeah, like I said, I'm, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Razor Ride Reviews for getting me into Akira Kurosawa films. Then we have Monster House, about a haunted house animated movie. This is really <laughs> actually well done. Uh, produced by Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg. Okay, really good. And we have, of course, the classic comedy, uh, Bridesmaid, about this uh, friend that's getting married and then she has her bridesmaids and <laughs> this wacky, uh, what's her name? Uh, God, the two girls from uh, Saturday Night Live. Kristen Wiig and uh, what's the other? Girl, uh, Maya Rudolph, yeah, and then you got her friends, and Rose Byrne, and, and this is a really, really good movie. You got to see it, really funny. And Alyssa McCarthy was absolutely a scream in that movie. Then we have Paranormal Activity 4, okay, which was a decent movie. It wasn't the best. I think I think it was the second movie. I think it was the best, best, best one out of all of them, I think. The, the one where they show the, the two little girls, I think, when they go back in time. I think that's the best, the better movie. Okay, and then we have, uh, of course, Avengers. Again, another a metal pack, and it has a $10 collectible, which I still haven't collected. Okay, and then we have The Proposition, really good movie about this uh, sheriff that uh, basically he he captures, you know, these two outlaw brothers, and 
he tells uh, the one brother that we're going to hang your other younger brother if you don't turn, go capture your oldest brother, who's like an even more badass bandit. Okay, and really good performance by uh, Guy Pearce and this Ray Winstone and uh, Danny Houston. Okay, and then we have All About Eve. This is the uh, Digi book. Okay, uh, Marilyn Monroe. We have Betty Davis and Baxter. Basically, about uh, All About Eve is about. Uh, this young starlet who basically attaches herself to a veteran actress and basically tries to steal a life, put it that way. <laughs> really good. Then we have uh, Total Recall. This is the uh, steel book, uh, the uh, Walmart exclusive metal pack, I guess, a metal case. Okay. And then we have 30 Days a Night, a really good vampire film. I only seen parts of this. I haven't seen it from beginning to end, but it's really creepy, super creepy. Uh, Josh Hartnett, uh, Melissa George, and I believe Danny Houston is in it as well. And then we have Grimm, Season 1, which I I almost got through all of this, but I still haven't got, I think I watched up to like 17 episodes of this, and then of course I get easily distracted, and then I, got, I also got Season 2 up there somewhere, and I know it's on Season 3 right now, so one day I gotta get caught up. And then one of the best movies I've seen, uh, basically basically about cop life, Jake Gyllenhaal, Michael Pena, and The Watch, really good, like I say, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is like filming there are uh, patrols and stuff, and it's really, really intense and really good, well acted. Then we have Moonrise Kingdom, uh, a Wes Anderson film, Bruce Willis, uh, Edward Norton, Bill Murray, Francis McDormand, Tilda Swinton, Jason Schwartzman, and Bob Baffelin. And basically about this troop, troop, me, troop, uh, girls, Boy Scout scoop, where the troop, where the uh, girl and the young boy meet, and they basically run away, and then everybody's looking for them. Okay, and there we go. Okay, a little weird movie. Good cast, very weird movie. And then this movie I thought was really underrated, The Day. Okay, this stars uh, Sean Asmore, Ashley Bell, Corey Hardwick, Dominic Monaghan, and Sh Shannon Sosserman. Basically about these uh, people in the future. And, uh, everything's, everybody's basically, after some great wars happened, everybody's back to basics and they're basically fighting for survival. And there's cannibals in this and everything. It's a really intense movie. Okay. Then we have, of course, The Avengers. This is uh, the regular two disc version right there. And then we have Dracula, Peter Cushing. This is the original. It's the UK edition of Hammer, the original movie. With Peter Cushing, uh, Christopher Lee. Really good. And Game of Thrones. This is, I think, the uh, season two, episode one. It came, I think you order that before you get the complete second season, which is this one. With the, this is the Lannister band, brand. Okay, right there. But I'm a Stark man. Okay, and hopefully the Starks will tuck it in their revenge. Okay, and then we have uh, the Monsters Inc., the original. Okay, which is really funny. Okay, and then we have uh, the Head of Electric trilogy, which I got from DVD Collector 100. She sent this to me in a trade, I think. Yeah, in the trade, we did a trade, I think. And she sent me this. Thank you for that. And then we have The Omen, this collection, all three films. Love this movie. Great stars in this movie by this guy that's basically. Uh, the, the son of the devil, basically, okay, and how it his rise, and then we have Slapshot Paul Newman, uh, a great movie about this independent hockey team, and it's really good, and they start to get even better once they hire these McKinsey brothers, I think it's McKinsey brothers, right, yeah, and then uh, we have Terminator Anthology, you know I'm a big Terminator man, all Four films right here: and Terminator, Terminator 2, Terminator 3: Rise of the Machine, and Terminator Salvation. And I'll probably be reviewing this, those four films later, as my in my film series reviews, which I do every Sunday. And then, of course, the last but not least, Top Gun, the 3D version, has this nice lenticular cover. Tom Cruise. Okay, great 80s movie. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so yeah, this this video almost lasted almost well, it's going to last 40 minutes. Anyway, uh, that's my complete collection. Okay. So again, again, I want to say thank you, everybody uh, that watched my videos and for commenting on my videos and watching them. And and what I'm going to do now, once I, I'm going to upload this video, and probably in the morning because it's 11 something now, I'll probably uh, upload this video in the morning and, and put it up. And that'll be it. And it'll be 15 parts. And what I'll do is I'll make a playlist for this my collection video. So if anybody wants to go back and look through my movies and stuff. And I know people ask me how many Blu-rays do you have. I haven't counted and I haven't I mean I really should, but I but I haven't. And maybe somebody 
who have looked through all the videos can tell me, you know, how many Blu-rays exactly that I have, because I have no idea. I think I have over 700, and I, I'm just being, excuse me, I don't think I'm underestimating that, but I think I have at least 700, at least, probably more, of course, and I'm, you know, buying more every week. So, anyway, uh, again, thank you for um, watching, and thank you for, you know, I promised to make it, and I got through it. I didn't think I would, you know, I thought it'd be more parts, I thought it'd be 20 parts, but I got through it, and there's only 15 parts, so it's good. Okay, so again, thank you for watching. Feel free to leave comments down below. This is Trey Pastor saying so long, and take care.